Правоохранители к тому времени уже выяснили, что это за туристы. The dramatic raid in a Minsk hotel was all over state TV. Belarusian special forces shown arresting this group of alleged Russian mercenaries. Experienced fighters, it's how they were described, suspected of being sent by Moscow to disrupt elections in the country last year. We got confirmed intel. These Russians had real combat experience and actually took part in armed conflicts. This heavily disguised Belarusian police commander warned at the time. But what he didn't know is why this mysterious group of Russians was really there. Few did, until now. All right, well, we're now driving to an undisclosed location on the outskirts of Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, where we're set to meet a group of former Ukrainian and military intelligence officials who have an extraordinary story about what actually went down in Belarus and about how those Russian mercenaries were in fact part of an elaborate Ukrainian-led sting operation to capture suspected Russian war criminals and to bring them to justice here. The former high-ranking officers spoke to CNN on condition we shield their identities. They're not authorized to disclose details of what they say was an ambitious, top-secret plan backed by the United States that failed at the last moment when Belarus intervened. When you saw all those people, those Russian mercenaries being arrested in Belarus, that was a nightmare for you. What did you think? The feeling I got was very bad because it meant all our hard work had gone down the drain. We'd carefully prepared for more than a year in the hope that justice would prevail and that these bandits would be in prison and punished. Unfortunately, this didn't happen. When he says bandits, he means Russian-backed fighters battling Ukrainian government forces in the country's breakaway east. Among them are Russian nationals accused of involvement in some of the worst atrocities of the war. Like the downing in 2014 of a Malaysian airliner, MH17, with nearly 300 people on board. Our intelligence sources say the men detained in Belarus had been identified over many months as having suspected links to war crimes. There were two who were present when the missile that down MH17 was launched. Four others were members of a group responsible for shooting down our military aircraft and killing at least 70 of our best men. So identifying and punishing these people was of high interest to us. It was apparently of interest to U.S. intelligence too, although U.S. officials deny having any direct role. According to our sources, the Ukrainian-led operation got some U.S. cash, technical assistance and advice from the CIA on drawing Russian mercenaries in. A senior U.S. official told CNN those allegations are false. But identifying the right people and then luring them out of Russia required an elaborate deception. So our former Ukrainian military intelligence sources told us they set about creating a fake private military company with its own Russian language website. On it, they advertised jobs like one lucrative contract at $5,000 a month to protect oil facilities in Venezuela. That was the bait. And we're told hundreds of Russian mercenaries actually took it. All they had to do, according to our sources, was prove who they were and where they'd fought. We started to call them and say, hey man, okay, tell me something about yourself. Maybe you are not really a fighter. Maybe you are a plumber or something like that. And then they started to reveal things about themselves, sending us documents, military IDs, and proof of where they'd fought. And we are like, bingo, we can use that. They're sending you evidence of who they are. Yes, they sent it to us. Absolutely. In fact, what followed was, according to our sources, a fountain of freely volunteered intel. Not just documents and photos, but potentially incriminating videos like this one, after the downing of a Ukrainian military aircraft in the eastern war zone, offered up by the fighters themselves. All Ukrainian intelligence had to do was pick the ones it wanted, offer the lucrative Venezuela contracts, because of COVID-19 travel restrictions in Russia, 
assemble them in neighbouring Belarus to fly out. Our intelligence sources say the real plan was to land them in Ukraine and make the arrests. If these people would have ended up here in Ukraine, the details of their criminal acts would have become known around the world. Ukraine could have brought them to justice and shown that our fight with Russia is serious and that we won't raise our hands and surrender. But the plan failed when the Belarusians arrested the group just hours before they were meant to leave. It could have been a stunning blow to Moscow. Instead, according to our sources, a bold Ukrainian intelligence operation was foiled. 